Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shannon Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, technology coach, and personalized learning coordinator for my district. And I am the show's producer, Fuzz Martin. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm also your husband. Have been for almost nine years. Aw. Aw. And... And we're sitting at the kitchen counter where we'll be for weeks. Four weeks. Four weeks? For weeks. For weeks. For weeks. We'll see how long it lasts. Yeah, how much how much time we spend together at the kitchen counter or how many weeks we spend in the same house. <laughs> how, how long before one of us moves to the basement? Uh, you get to go first because it's cold. <laughs> it and is there's cold spiders. down there. There's spiders. There are no the, spiders in our basement. And there's those creepy. Oh, what are they? The earwigs? Um, no, centipedes. Oh yeah, we we do have centipedes. Not really. It's cold still, but I don't know. Centipedes creep me out. All yeah. the legs are like. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. So. We're finding. So far. Some. Some calm in the chaos. Yes. In the closure chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Our theme this week is calming the closure chaos. No, I know. school closure yeah. chaos. I is. know here in Wisconsin, the governor closed all the schools for Correct. Uh, three weeks, I believe. Three weeks is his. And some school districts have chosen to go four because it kind of extends into their spring break. Um, yep. But because we all have different spring breaks. Some are at two, some are at three, and some are at four. Weren't but we just bragging three. about how we got away with no uh, <sighs> snow closures this yeah. year? And now... That was like last week. Yeah. <laughs> so never brag about things. So, yeah, we went from like, oh, like three snow days to like, oh, here's three weeks off. But it's not off. It's it's virtual learning. Right. Um, Which is where you shine. I enjoy this. I we've done a lot in mm-hmm. my district to get us situated and all set up for this. Um, it's kind of interesting too because on Friday the kids are like, "Oh, we're off from school," and everyone said, "No, just next week you'll be learning from home." Right. It's just like, and our kids knew it and they were prepped for it before they left. Some districts though weren't ready; like they didn't know that it was going to be called, um, or they hadn't called it sooner. So because of that, uh, they some schools are having kids, you know, come and gather things and get themselves ready. Right. But across the country now, and across the world, around the world, we're all going into this kind of like learning from home virtual mode. So because of that, and I don't know if you can hear snoring dog in the background, but <laughs> holy cow, is she like sawing logs back there? Today? Yeah, she is. Um. So calming the closure chaos. I have never seen. So many teachers like light up Twitter, like, all yeah. right, what are everyone's ideas? Which I think it's so cool, like how everyone kind of bands together in a situation like this. But sure, I can help you. Or I have ideas, or I have ideas, and I'm at the point where like I just have so many ideas. I'm like, can just here, like here's here's my stuff. I don't know what else. Like, look at it first, and then I'll tell you all the things you want to know. Just because mm-hmm. I have so many resources, and I know so many teachers have like giant collections of resources. Um, so I was, I'm moving beyond my usual resources. And this today I am sharing a couple resources that other teachers have asked for help with. Um, and they're fun ones that I haven't talked about before. So sure, I figured great. I was like, Hey, like these are kind of cool and, um, helpful I think to many. So that was what I was aiming for, but trying to calm the closure chaos. If, if we can. Yes. Stock up on TP and oh my. <laughs> we're good on the toilet paper. Yeah, that handled. I carried more about coffee. Like there needs to be good coffee, not just like regular coffee, but there needs to be yeah. like, flavored coffee happening in this house. I'm telling you. Yeah, a little. But we have no shortage of tools for your now virtual <laughs> classroom. Yes, this is true. And if I don't mention it in this week's episode. Go back to the ed tech directory. There's over yeah. 150 sites, and I've tried to cover almost every subject area. So if you don't find it in this week's episode, go ahead. Go back in that ed tech directory and, yeah. or shoot me an email. I'll be like, hey, I have an idea. I don't know what to do for this. And I would love to respond to that because yeah. there's so many things. So let's get started. So the first website is called 
openlibrary.org. Okay. So this is literally a virtual library. But what's cool is you don't have to have a library card because I know some kids in some areas and in, in you ha- you have to be able to have your library card to be able to go online and even do virtual books or audiobooks. Mm-hmm. So this one allows you to not have to have a library card. Okay. Why are you laughing at me? Because I sc- <laughs> be careful when you go in there because I scrolled right away to a uh, uh, a romance, a romance novel. Oh, of course. <laughs> so it is. Stormy persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's mm-hmm. it's open library and it's a it's a library. So if you yeah. go go through any library, you, there's all kinds of books. Oh yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah. So right. clearly, you just I scrolled. didn't go to this. I just <laughs> scrolled down. It happened to be on the. Um. So they have books by books like to sponsor at the top. So then there's classics that they have in there, books that we love. So like, um, like Harry Potter. Ender's Game, mm-hmm. um, recently returned. So, if, so they get they get checked out like they would in a regular library. So they may have four or five licenses for a book. Sure. So they get checked out. So any you know under your name, yeah, or your email. But then, if someone once they return it, then you can borrow that book. Right. And so, um, yes, they have romance. <laughs> but then they have a whole kids section, mm-hmm. and it's not just. Um, and they like Dean Coons, and they they have good authors, Tom Clancy. <laughs> so they have um, in the kids section, I thought was cool. They have picture books, so you can borrow like um, like a regular picture book. Like they have Tangled in here, and I um, Curious George and Thomas the Tank Engine. So you can check out one of these books, and then once you borrow the book, you read it. It and you click the button, it turns pages and everything. So you can do it on a tablet or a computer, but it's reading a virtual book, which I thought was cool. Um, and then they have Hercules, they have Swindle. So they have a whole bunch of, they have a pretty large collection of books that you can pick from and check out. So if you have kiddos that maybe don't have access to the library or don't have a library card mm-hmm. um, offhand, and if we're working remotely, you even have graphic novels in here. Um, that way these kids have access to books um, and can do just reading on their computers. Yeah. Um, they can respond if they're doing responses for you or if they just need free read books and maybe they don't have a lot in their house mm-hmm. or they've read every book in their house and they want some other options. It's pretty cool that you can just use this site and have your books um all on your computer or yeah. your tablet, which is pretty cool. And when you're done with the book, you have two weeks that you're allowed to have them for most books, and then you click just return book, and you get to you get to loan loan out loan. You can borrow, I guess, <laughs> um, up to five books sure. per person. And then when you're done with it, you just click return book. It puts it back on their virtual shelf, mm-hmm. and then you can check out another one. It's also cool because it gives you all like the regular information too. And if you really love the book, they even give you the link to buy it on Amazon, which is kind of funny. So, oh, nice. um, but everything is there, and there's lots of book choices. And again, it's not just for students; it's great for students to use. But you, as a teacher, can check out books, or other family members can check out books. Mm-hmm. So, openlibrary.org. I highly recommend it if you're trying to get books in kids' hands and you don't want to touch Jeremy library books. Right. So, there you go. Good. Cool. Site one. Very good. Reading. Reading. Site two is called <laughs> Science Bob. Science Bob. <laughs> so, also. Oh, they've got romance science on this front. I'm just kidding. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's like, that's not even true. So, in our world of at home close quarters, spending lots of quality time together. We also don't want kids on computers and in screens all of the time either. Yeah. Like you got somehow to incorporate other things in and get them up and moving and doing things. So I was digging around and teachers are asking for like easy science stuff all in one place. Cause there's like, Oh, you can look here for like, you know, the, elephant toothpaste thing or mm-hmm. you can like make volcanoes and blow things up but this site is cool because sciencebob.com so it's sciencebob.com has experiments science for ideas science q a research help videos all kinds of stuff but 
you can go through, you can make ice cream in a plastic bag. And then not only does it have how to do it, because it gives you all of the ingredients you're going to need, what you're going to need to do, Mm -hmm. um, then it gives you the science behind it. It talks about endothermic process and explains it to you, um, which is pretty cool. And you can go through it on their homepage. It walks you through. You can just pick and choose from things that you want to do. So there's the experiment section. Go ahead and pick out an experiment. Um, you can build a hovercraft. You can. Um, well, I guess um, we're going to be do doing elephant color toothpaste symphony. with the little one here in the kitchen. Oh, we are. Yeah. Totally. She's got her little like chemistry kit. Yeah. And she's all excited about it. Um, but blowing up a balloon with yeast, just like household mm-hmm. items then and showing them how to get their hands on and do stuff. Yeah. But what I also thought was cool is they have science Q&A here. So you can, um, like crazy questions like what is an owl pellet or is a zebra white with black stripes or black with white stripes? And Good then question. they actually give you the science behind it, which I thought was cool, like just to spark their curiosity and mm-hmm. maybe want them to investigate or read about other things, which I liked a lot. Um, and then they also have research help. And so then you can search other science websites. So if you want to know more about black holes, they have a link to that. And it takes you to the NASA site that explains all about black holes. So this one resource mm-hmm. of Science Bob has from experiments to the background knowledge to crazy science questions to like videos and then experiments. And it's also like then they have videos showing Um, like his YouTube channel, showing some of the different experiments he talks about how you do them. Yeah. So the whole thing is just set up really nice. And when you're stuck at home and you need to have lots of entertainment, it gets you... And learning. And learning, yes. But it gets you off the computer and kind of investigating in your own house, like what are some things that you can do and, Mm -hmm. and learning about things in your own home, which I think is going to be very important if we are spending lots of quality time in our own homes together and maybe you can investigate why centipedes live in our basement and why they are so creepy around on the walls because they are weird they and are. creepy so there you go Science every creature Bob is beautiful in its own way and serves its purpose i'm sure yeah i still don't know why centipedes exist i'm sure that well they're food for something yes so there's that for thought at this point nice Thank science you. bob check it out science bob even if you're like not a science teacher and you're just yeah. hanging out your home like just if you're sitting at home by yourself look go if, find some stuff and blow some things up in your sink right be cool if you do have kids it's cool. and they're gonna be home for four weeks an experiment a day there's yeah. enough on there yeah one a day maybe one every other day yeah depending on your supplies of how much Baking soda you have and balloons and various other odds and ends. For your own sanity. But the ice cream one, I definitely want to do the ice cream one too. Yeah. Ice cream in a bag. I've done it before. And if you're not good with it and you get salt in the wrong part, <laughs> yeah. your ice cream is salty. <laughs> and, and the ice doesn't get cold like it's supposed to. Yeah. So there's that. Are you welding? I am welding. Okay. So the next one I have, I, I, I teach in a K-12 district. We have shop teachers, and how are they going to go virtual? Like, yeah. Good my question. thought was awesome. If you are doing like mechanics, go send the kids out to like change their oil. Well, maybe not change the oil of their like vehicles in their home, but go open up the hood of the car that's sitting in your garage. Maybe fill it with um, windshield wiper fluid. Yeah. Maybe go through and like check the oil. Maybe vacuum the car out. You know, give them tasks, like real world tasks. Go do stuff about cars. Go learn about your garage. So also, we've got welding kids. Mm -hmm. I was digging around. And there is a virtual welder. Yeah. And I've been doing, I've done welding simulators before on like field trips with my kids. And I was pretty proud of myself. Like, oh, it's like 70% accuracy, which is not great. But the weld might have half held or something. But this virtual welding game, it's called welding, like, dash, game, Mm -hmm. dot, firebaseapp.com, which is really long. So go to the link on the website. Yeah, go to the link on the website. (laughs) It's smartwdi.com. And and it's a welding game. And literally, you're just making beads, but you have to do it in a straight line, and it 
scores you out with if you can do it straight and within 30 seconds and at the right pace the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so if nothing else, they can practice their pacing for making welding beads. And it's not easy. No, it's not. Though I just did score 18,870 points. I think it would be helpful if you had a mouse. And not, I agree. Not a trackpad. A trackpad. Yeah, I agree. Because both of us on our Macs, like trying to trackpad, yeah. it goes like, blah, 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 and then it like. Yeah, and you kind of gotta like welds. pick your finger up or something. Yeah, so um, you have to finesse it, right? To like make it a really strong weld. But if be you be even nicer if you had a stylus. Yeah, but that's kind of cheating. I mean, well, I, I mean, in, not, real in life, real life, I mean, you're real probably life, you're gonna be closer to a stylus, right? Well, it's a little heavier than a stylus, but anyway. Virtual but a stylus welding. is heavier than your finger on the trackpad. Also true. And you're also not like pushing two buttons, like holding it yes. and moving it at the same Correct. time. Correct. Anyway, virtual welding. So I know there's a, it's a tricky, like, it's a tricky place to be in because we're trying to like teach from home. Yeah. Life skills. You got high school kids welding, which is super cool. I think mm-hmm. welding is fun. I'm terrified of it. We have a, like a robotic welder, and even that, I can run the robot. The welding part, I'm like, nope, someone else is doing it. There's <laughs> All like, you. There's gas and a flame, and I'm not touching it. Um, yep. But <clears throat> at least you can throw them on for a little bit here and there. It'd be kind of fun and see how accurate they actually are and, and write about it, you know, or, mm-hmm. or talk about it, have a, a video discussion or something, how this is totally not what they actually do in class, but it's life skills and kind of fun. And if you're, again, sitting around at home, and you want to challenge a buddy, maybe you're not going to play GeoGuessr today, right. but you are going to do virtual welder, and you are going to weld. And yeah. whoever has the best score doesn't have to do dishes that day. Oh, that's a good call. I think that we can start making some in-home, in-house challenges with the virtual welder. Yeah. Well, there you get- go. See? We can, we can hang out in the house for a month <laughs> and only go out for... Don't you have to go for gas and groceries? No. Because the gas isn't going to be used. So there's that. There is that. Our last site is through Discovery Education. Yes. And it is discoveryeducation.com slash community slash virtual dash field dash <laughs> trips slash virtual field trips. If you are stuck at home travel the world or travel places mm-hmm. without leaving your living room Super or cool. kitchen yep. or kitchen table or countertop or wherever it may be. Um, these are really cool. So no permission slips required. I love their little, ta- like yeah. these virtual events are educators take students on amazing places and give them remarkable experiences without ever leaving the classroom or your kitchen table or your living room couch right? or your basement that has creepy bugs in it. I don't know, mm-hmm. but it's cool. So what you can do is you scroll down a little bit into the page and it says filter by, because holy cow, there's a lot of topics from health and wellness to tech and manufacturing. So you can virtual weld and then go on a field trip. Um, sports, science, financial literacy, which to me, if it's not in your everyday curriculum, great time to throw that in. Yeah, that'd be great. Finances, it's kind of, you know, <clears throat> very relevant right now. Um, community engagement, literacy. So you pick one of your topics of agriculture. Um, I just chose literacy. Go through. You can find um, various different field trips to go on. They have Shakespeare 400 for Shakespeare's 400th birthday. They have... Um, like John Deere careers. They have all kinds of stuff. You pick your topic, girls get STEM, click on it, the little picture, Mm -hmm. and then it'll lead to different, it kind of takes you to different sites. Um, But then there's a video that goes with it. And then there's a companion teacher guide that goes with it. And then there's also student activities for some of them. So you can walk through the videos and each one's set up slightly differently. um, Where... There's the teacher companion guide for all of them where you then have curriculum. So mm-hmm. if you're going to throw one of these into, say, a Google Classroom or some other LMS that your school is using, yep. you can put the video in and then you can have a video chat with the with your students about like what they got from the field trip. Mm-hmm. Or you can do a writing piece or just have them videotape themselves responding. Or even, you know, if you're showing them something that they could connect to their home, then, mm-hmm. you know, go 
tell us about what you found in your house that is the same. Um, there's a lot of options. What's cool is one of them I dug into, and my kids, I've actually had kids do once or twice before, is they have a sports-related one, and it's based on football. Okay. And Madden created the football videos for oh, it. Oh, cool, yeah. So then they're like, oh, it's like Madden, and I'm learning about football, but it's like science, and I'm like <laughs> learning about stuff. So, and they talk about offense and defense, and it's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure. Yeah. Um, just so many options that if you can't get out of the space you're in, then you're bringing the space that you're in to you, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's lots of options with virtual field trips and connecting uh, what you're doing to the rest of the world. Sure. So Great. virtual field trips, if you can't leave your living room, then bring your living room to the world. No, <laughs> no please don't. No. No. It's not good for the world <laughs> to have your... But yeah, so I know everyone's kind of stuck in this this place that we've never been in before. Like mm-hmm. we've had snow days and we've yeah. had, you know, things where you're, you know, you have to stay inside, but I don't think it's never been worldwide like it is. And I know we have listeners all around the world. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of people were all kind of in the same boat yep. or place or living room or home, not in the same home, but we're all in our homes. We are. Um, so, hopefully you're finding some calm before this calming this, now that we have all been closed down, <laughs> and finding virtual and educational sources. Yes. And again, we only talk about four things today, but the EdTech directory has tons of things. Yeah, if you're looking, just want to, if you got some time on your hands and you just want to uh, go in there and look around, uh, you can... Listen to the different episodes that the show's been featured or that the tech has been featured on, and and even if you have, and my always thing too is is share it with others. If you know a teacher is struggling, or hey, like <clears throat> art teachers, like I have stuff in there for art teachers, like yeah. Google Arts and Culture and Drawio, and then there's a lot of things like you can pick and choose episodes that are themed and share them with staff as well. Right, we're all trying to help and support each other and change it up because after a week of virtual learning. The second week of virtual learning, it's going to need to be different than the first week. Yeah. And the third week is going to need to be different than the second week because... you got to keep them engaged. All of us are going to be climbing the trees that are in our backyards. <laughs> so there's that. Yes. Cool. Well, I hope everyone stays safe and healthy. And socially distanced. And socially distanced. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you ever want to get any more information and the links to the technology discussed in this episode, you can visit SmartNWI.com or visit us on Facebook. New episodes each week. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast and the Smart NWI website are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed on this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we sure hope they do. Have a great week.